Okay guys, so this is the build order that many of you are asking, the man at arms build order into the flush. Uh, commonly on the 1v1 Arabia games, one of the best strategies are the man at arm uh, rush, uh, followed by archers, skirmishers and so on. So in this, in this build order I will show you how to go for man at arms uh, using a regular civilization, uh, the Saracens. This build order can be used as a great opening because the men at arms are the fastest, uh, are one of the fastest options that you have for opening. Because while you are going feudal age, you can be doing the militia, and you when you reach the feudal age, you just upgrade them. So if your enemy are is, for example, going for scouts, by the time he reaches the the feudal age, you you will be already on f on feudal and may upgrading the man at arms by the time he has uh, his f his three scouts you will have attacked him for at least two minutes with the man at arms so that's a great advantage uh, so to start this build order you need to put six villagers on the ship like i did here that's the best way of doing this then uh, later what i suggest you to do is to put four villagers on the wood I will make I make a lumber camp here and I will put my four villagers on the wood. Guys, another thing that I like to enforce on the videos is that your economy is going to be so much more useful if you control your villagers of the ship and always let the next ship here on the line to be eaten like I'm doing here. Uh, using a group, a number group, all my ship gatherers are on the number 4 so when I want to get the next ship I just keep tracking how much food there's left for example now I have uh, 10 food, I just kill the other and send all the villagers to the next one when I do this I my economy gets better because I lost I lose some idle time, I do not have idle time of villagers trying to all kill the ship or anything like this so now that I just uh, have four villagers on the wood I'm going to get the boar the next this next villager here is going for the boar and I will send another villager to the berries he will make a house for me and then make the meal okay so I will go for the berries if you think that your fort ship will be over uh, before the boar is on the TC, you should not let it wait for the villager to born to, to go there. You can just take a villager out of the ship gathering before and send him to the, get the boar sooner, okay? So do not wait. Once again, this is a basic build order, so I'm not using the deers. I think they are a great boost for the minute arms, and if you watch expert players, they will almost always use this but I'm not because I want to do this as a basic build order something that you can do even if you are not uh, so use it to lure deers or if your deers are in a bad position so you won't be dependent on deers to execute this after I put 8 villagers on the boards I will add 6 villagers to the berries okay guys so the next 6 villagers are going to the berries and, and I'm getting my second boar here Another uh, advice that I have to you is that you can split your villagers on the resources like this yeah? Each one to one tree, each one to one berry Or make always 8 villagers for the boars 8 is always a magic number for the boars yeah? So right now I have 8 villagers getting this boar And another thing that I'm going to suggest you is that you skip the loom If you are able to get your boars without trouble like those that were really close to the TC and not on hills uh, I suggest you to do this, this is going to be good for your economy if you postpone the loan because when you do the loan you are losing uh, the opportunity to have one extra villager for the whole dark age so that's why your economy won't be that great now guys I just finished putting 6 villagers on the berries eh? you can see that I have 8 villagers on the boards and 6 on the berries so I will send a villager forward and this villager is the one that's going to build the barracks, okay? You always want to have a barracks uh, soon enough uh, because if you do this barracks soon you can just uh, click feudal and start uh, going for the, the mana times, okay? I also have a bad gold as you guys can see 
now that I just put another villager here on the barracks, I'm sending another villager to the gold. And guys, I'm not going for a pop 22 build order. I'm going for a pop 20. Oh, actually, I'm going for a pop 22. It seems that it's possible if because I don't have the loom. If you do not, if you have to be, make the loom uh, before, you will probably have to use a pop 23 up instead of pop 22. So now I have. Uh, two villagers getting the gold and I just click up I will start making men at arms right now so the idea here is to have at least three men at arms by the time you are feudal so if you have more food if you have extra deers or something you can get uh, you can get more you can make more men at arms but if you don't the suggestion here is just to make three men at arms they are good enough on the beginning your enemy is going to have trouble uh, after getting the men at arms and keeping the villagers getting the ship, I will start making farms. I like to make at least three farms, guys, on my way to feudal. So already two farms here, and I will send more two villagers to the wood. So I will have at least six villagers in each wood. Uh, now comes an important detail. I have seen many players uh, skipping the men at arms before feudal age, but look at this. I'm 6% into the feudal age and I already have the 3 minute arms. This is utterly important because when you hit feudal, you will be already on your enemies. So that's what makes the difference. Uh, another important detail here is that sometimes you need to add your ranges real quick. For example, when you are being forwarded and you need to do a quick answer. If you can wait a bit, I suggest you to organize your economy before you go for this. So I'm about to reach the feudal age. I reach it, so I'm going to upgrade the men at arms, the wood upgrade, and the villagers right now finish getting the food, so I will put them all on the wood. Rem remember guys that I have uh, already 6 villagers here on the wood, I'm adding 6 more on, on, on a second lumber camp. I have men at arms attacking my enemy. Right now, if this guy went for scouts, he's probably finishing his table. So, while this guy is finishing his table, you are already attacking him with men at arms. Before 11 minutes. Huh? That's important. Now that I have all those villagers here on the wood, I can go with the next one to make an archery range on the front. So, in this build order, guys, I will try to make two archery range rush. So I will just build it. Uh, you do not have to worry in having so fast archery ranges because you will already be doing a lot of damage with your men at arms. So if you are doing a good job, your enemy will be delayed and he won't be able to defend. If your enemy defends you so so well from the men at arms, that's because he had a really closed map and maybe the men at arms were not the best option. Uh, he will probably be losing time, lo losing. Uh, fighting with our men at arms while you are just keeping making the, the new ranges like this so I will stop attacking him for a second Ooh, that's a big mistake huh? I got roused sorry guys I will use this opportunity to make the town watch please ignore this and now that I have an archery range I can start making archers and skirmishers after I make two archery ranges guys the immediate, immediate building is the blacksmith for the fletching okay Okay, so I finished the house, making more houses. Uh, since I was using a lot of villagers to get the the berries, they are over now. So I need to start adding more and more villagers to the berries, to, to the farms. So right now, I will keep adding villagers to the wood, keep making archers and skirmishers, and all my extra villagers that are born are going to the woods around the TC even the, the ones on the berries and the idea here guys is to keep adding farms as you want now a uh, really important detail you see that I am doing archers if you want to skip full archers you have to put 6 villagers on the gold if you want to do a mix of archers and skirmishers you just keep adding villagers to the farm instead of gold that's the big difference between going for skirmishers and going only for archers ok on this build order I'm doing a mix of archers and skirmishers so the good thing about the archers guys is that you'll be able to snipe villagers uh, much faster it's hard to kill villagers with skirmishers the enemy will often have enough time to go off your skirmishers so 
That's not good. Oh, the enemy is coming with skirmishers, huh? But uh, skirmishers are not bad, huh? There's an advantage when you are going for skirmishers. The advantage is that you will always have a good counter to archers as well, and you'll be able to pick more fightings. So right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm all adding more archers, skirmishers, and notes, guys, that I already did the fletching. This is really important. If you are going for ranged units, the sooner you can make the fletching, the better, okay? Uh, the idea here is that you have the fletching by the time you have at least five units, unless you are not planning to attack so soon, so... If you... Uh, at this point, you probably lost your men at arms, but if you didn't, you can just follow the archers and the men at arms together and work with this. Uh, as you can see, I still have the 12 villagers on the wood. I might have made a few more here, because they finished the berries and I sent to the wood, and I'm just spamming farms. I will just keep in making the skirmishers and the archers, making houses with one villager. Uh, if uh, I will enforce it once again. If you want to switch full into archers, you just need to add more villagers to the gold, okay? Right now I'm focusing more on the skirmishers. Having j just a few archers is enough for you to kill villagers if you need, so you won't need to, bo to bother with that, okay? You see that I have a lot of farms, I already have 16 farms, a good number of farms is 20 farms, so I'm going for something like 18 or 20 farms. In this layout that I did, I could protect myself from rushes with those houses here, but this was not good for farming, so if you need to do this, do. Just add one more meal, it won't hurt your economy so much and it will be really good for you. And if you need to fight against skirmishers or archers, I also suggest you to do this another upgrade, the padded archer armor, that will be really useful for you. Okay guys, so I'm adding more and more farms. I will probably stop at 18, 18 to 20. Uh, right now I have one idol, he will make a farm, and I will go for the gold. I will send two more villagers to the gold and I will be about to go up. Uh, remember guys that when you have uh, at least six villagers on the gold you are able to keep pumping uh, archers from the two uh, archery ranges, okay? This is really important. Now that I have these farms and this gold I will just click the well barrel upgrade before I go up and I will be able to go up right after I finish this upgrade so I won't have much trouble. I have a big army of skirmishers and archers. Uh, by the way guys, this build order can be much better. This is the basic one. This is how you do if you do not have any way of getting an advantage. But if you want to have an even better feudal, you can do more advanced uh, things in Dark Age. For example, you can lure the deers, so you won't have to make those farms that I did. And you can have the two archery reigns straight for, uh, at the moment that you go for for the feudal. Another option that you have is to use civilizations that have a bonus on the wood or on the food. For example, if you try this, this strategy with the Indians, if you try this strategy with the Malians, with on any other civilization, it will be even stronger. And guys, I'm just making a few more skirmishers and I'm about to go up. Another good useful tip that I have is that you build your houses making always walls to protect yourself. This will be much helpful for you on the later game. And guys, I'm about to click up. Okay, I click up and I'm researching the castaway upgrade. I have all this big army. And one thing that I found really important to say is that right now, I will even pause. It will always depend on what do you want to do with your game, that and this will be the what's going to drive you to the <laughs> to the game. Let's let me explain how this will work. If you want to go for knights, you can keep this economic setup, all those farms, the villagers on the gold, and you just have to add more stables. 
but if you want to go for crossbows, you don't need to have all those farms. In fact, if you have all those farms, you won't be able to boom. At some point, you'll be in a villager disadvantage and with a big stock of food that you won't be using for anything. So here the situation is, if you want to go for knights, just add the stables. If you want to go for crossbows, what you have to do right now is to take off at least 6 to 8 villagers from your farmers and send to the wood. So to make it a bit simple, simpler to remember, I will just take out 8 villagers of the farms and send them 4 villagers to each one of the woods, okay? So I'm taking now four villagers from these farms and sending here to the wood and I will take also these four villagers and send here. By the way, uh, some players like to make the well barrow soon in the feudal age, so if you made it, you do not have to worry, but if you didn't made it, this is the time to make the well barrow because your farms are about to go off, okay? So you're going to need. This is a bad gold, huh? My villagers are not being able to get the gold altogether. <laughs> Since I uh, choose it to go for the crossbowman, you can see that I'm having a big bank of wood. Uh, this bank, guys, is going to be used uh, to get the to get me enough resources to make two more TCs. The idea here is that I make two more town centers to start booming as soon as I reach the castle age. So that's why what I'm doing. Uh, if you want to go full offensive, you can also, for example, do sig workshops, try to go three stables. There are a lot of options if you want to go full attack. But in a regular game, and this is how you will probably have to play in team games, you want to boom. So what I'm doing here is to add more villagers to the wood. You see that I have a big stock of wood, and this I will need this because all my farms are running off. Huh? You can see that the villagers are moving to the outside farmers. That's because the farms are running off and soon I will need more farms. Enemy is attacking me with a huge pack of skirmishers, but uh, when I finish click up, I will kill those skirmishers. Now that I am up, I'm going to make the bodkin arrow for the crossbowman. The crossbowman upgrade, which is really important. The wood upgrade. And the other upgrade that I find really useful is the thumb ring if you want to have better crossbows, but I'm not going to do here. I will add, add two more town centers, you see that I'm adding them here. I can even upgrade the food if I want, because I have some spare. And one important detail guys is that do you remember that we take off four villagers out of the farms during the up? Now I can get those four villagers and put them back because they already gathered the food that I needed. So I'm sending back eight villagers from the wood to the farms, okay? Uh, also, if you want, some players like to make the ballistics to for the archers as soon as they click up. With this build order, you just need to build an university and you have an economy well balanced to make the ballistics. And this will happen because you will not be needing to get a lot of a lot of wood. You already to make farms. You already had farms from Dark Age. Now is the time to replace the farms. And a good tip to make your economy keep running right now. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to attack those skirmishers. <laughs> I don't want them to kill my houses. A good tip for you is to count how many farms you have. If you have three TCs and you are making crossbowmen, you will need at least 18 farmers uh, getting food in order to keep your TCs running. Okay, so let's do a small count. I can see that I have 19 farms, so this means that my town centers are going to be sustainable. There won't be any problem. Also, for be a battle tip, if you're fighting against a group of ranged, ranged units, always put your skirmishers on the front, because they can absorb more damage from arrows and this will increase your chances of your hates of success. So, that's what you want to do. Uh, I'm having a big, uh, small upset with this map. As you guys can see, I'm not being able to get so many gold because of the map. The gold is a bit stuck into the woods, huh? not so good. So right now guys, I will teach you how to go into 
to just go up to arbalests. To go up to arbalests, my suggestion here is to make at least 30 farmers. So you want to add more farmers. If you had 18, you need to add to add 12 more farmers. Okay. I'm keeping making archers. I have the ballistics, so I have good upgraded archers. They can be really useful. In a team game, this combo is what you should do if you are playing as a wing, as a flank. Let me count how many farmers. I have 31 farmers, so I have enough farmers to uh, Imperial. Just what I'm going to do right now, guys, is to add more villagers to the gold. Since I need at least 6 villagers just to keep the archers going, I'm going to add at, uh, a lot more villagers to the gold. You can add, for example, 10 more villagers and keeping making farms, keeping making the upgrades. This way you're gonna be able to go for arbalests. I will do now the hand cart so that those 30 farmers will be really really faster and I'm going to do a monastery to up later. Another upgrade that I'm going to do is the gold shaft mining upgrade which will increase the height of my gold gathering and will be really useful for me and for my economy. If you are playing a team game and you are with a civilization where you are planning to go for arbalests, once you have 30 farmers like this, your economy can already sustain you to make the villagers and to gather food to go in. So you can already add more archery ranges if it pleases you. So I'm going to add two more archery ranges, have four archery ranges, and that way I will be able to go for the arbalests. Also, uh, this is not a build order tip, but if you can, always uh, let your archers in bigger groups. If you lose the archers and if you try to attack with small groups, it can be easily targeted, targeted by knights. So I do not recommend you to do this. And right now, guys, I will just keep getting gold, wood. My villagers will mostly go to those two resources. And I will just keep here fighting and adding more archers. By the way, I'm about to click up, so in a team game, I would be almost on the way to Imperial. Let me go Imp right now, just to wait in the gold. I was supposed to have more gold, but this little throwback here get this build order a bit less effective, but with 30 farmers, 31 actually, I'm able to go up with, with no trouble. Now that I'm going up, I can go in, I can go for the thumb ring, if I do not have search it later. If I want I can make even more archery ranges like 6. Now that I do not need uh, much more gold I can go for it. So my economy all now has all the wood upgrades, all the meal, meal upgrades, hand uh, wheelbarrow, hand cart, gold shaft mining, bow saw. If you want to make a castle just send villagers to the stone, if you want to make a greater economy for later maybe adding a runs or switching into elephants or anything that requires a lot more economy, you can even add uh, one more town center, but this is the base build order to go for the archers in team games. Uh, you, if you are playing a team game you will mostly need to add runs uh, in a 1v1 case as well, so you just have to add sick workshops here. I also recommend you to add two because you are going to be using at least one to research the capped run and sig run upgrade so the other one can work and all the villagers that are born in right now are going to the wood because at some point guys you will have to replace all those third farmers who are going to keep making siege so there's a lot of stuff that I will have to do. I think I can stop for now because I'm almost on imperial age. I was following a suggestion that the viewers were giving that I should not only do the beginning of the build order but show how I go into the game because most channels just say okay that's the beginning but what do you do after you do this initial thing? How do you develop your economy? What numbers could you have to get it easier? So that's the 18 farms so that this is can work and then the 30 farms so can go imperial you see with the third farmers doing uh, at the right time now that i'm going to reach imperial i will have the resources to upgrade all the units i will be able to upgrade the arbalests i'm going to upgrade the 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 capet runs so capet run upgrade arbalest upgrade uh, bracer upgrade as well huh? strong upgrade for the ar the archers it's a must upgrade, to be honest. Also, the one that's important important is the chemistry one. 
Ooh, am I gonna? Trying to auto micro the man, gonna. <laughs> Runs attacking, chemistry is doing, and really important if you are with a civilization where you can upgrade the wood, this wood upgrade here, the two man saw, is really important. Always do this as soon as you reach Imperial. I can keep making archers from all the archery ranges. If you are playing at in game, guys, this is probably the time where you should go to the corner and make a market. So, just to remind you of this, with 35 minutes, I'm going to send this villager here to the corner and make a market, okay? As a rule for you to remember. I already have capped runs, now I have the food to make the sig runs. You will always have an extra food because uh, you only need uh, 18 villagers, the other 12 ones that are extra to the disease are the ones making it possible for you to just keep making the, the food bank and making the upgrades, so that's basically it. Okay, so I'm killing a lot of buildings. Uh, remember guys that I have the Saracen, so the, those Arbalests are really painful to the buildings. I was not thinking about this, <laughs> just realized this, but anyway, you are not depending on the archers to kill the buildings, you will have Caped runs and later Sig runs as I'm upgrading, and that's pretty much how you do the economy. There's nothing else. Even the enemy said, okay, you did enough with the build order, time to stop. <laughs> So let's just go and make a small summary of what's the important stuff here. First important stuff, uh, to go for the men at arms it's important that you go for 4 villagers on the wood. Second important task is that you need to have at least 14 villagers on the food. To have 14 villagers on the food you can have 8 villagers hunting the boars and the other 6 ones you can just go to the berries. Uh, if you are an uh, if you are used to lure deers or uh, steal boars, steal sheep or do anything to increase your food income during the dark age, it will always boost your economy, but that's not a must. You can do a regular build order. Another suggestion is that you do a few farms when you are on the way up to the feudal age, because sometimes you might need to have a quick food production to make skirmishers or maybe make more mana arms. I only did 3 mana arms, but if you want to do, you can do it up to 6 mana arms with this build order. You just have to add more farms and make your ranges later. Since I did the farms on the Dark Age, I had to do the, the ranges a bit after I went to the feudal. When I'm on the feudal, I like to use the time that I gain by having the Benet Arms attacking to make another lumber camp, to plan where I will put my buildings. After I place the two ranges, I immediately try to place in the blacksmith. I have seen a lot of players doing archers, skirmishers, but no blacksmith for fletching, so the fletching is really a must upgrade for this kind of army. It's not an option for you to keep making archers and skirmishers with no fletching for so many time because once your enemy does, he's going to out micro and out range you so badly. So this is a must. And after you have the ranges pumping units, you just have to choose. If you want to do skirmishers, you just have to leave uh, one or maybe two villagers on the go to be making a bank for you to go castle and focus on the food. If you want to go archers, you have to put six villagers on the go, so both of your archery rangers are going to be able to do the archers. And if you want to go for archers and skirmishers, you can just let like two or three villagers on the go and keep making archers and skirmishers like I did according to what you are going to use. Uh, how I know if I need skirmishers or archers? Well, that's a game situation. If you want to fight against skirmishers, well, then you should make more skirmishers. If you want to kill archers or scouts or even men at arms, then you should be making only the archers. That's basically how you are going to choose. It's really situational, so I don't like to make build orders for only archers and players okay, saying, oh, I did a build order for archers and the enemy did skirmishers. Man, that's the counter. That's what our enemy is supposed to do, that's why he did it, so that's how it works. And later, I just keep adding villagers to the farm on the feudal age, until I have up to 18 to 20 farms, then I go up. When you go up, you have to pay attention if you're going for crossbows, if you're going for knights, and then you can just keep adjusting your economy, 
This was an example of going from archers into crossbows. Uh, after the crossbows, I went into the arbalests and runs. So this is pretty much uh, what you can do in a team game. The difference in the team game is that sometimes you find useful to have a castle. So this extra wood that I have here, I would probably not have this. I would probably be taking a lot of stone to make more uh, castles if I was playing as the Saracens. My idea would probably be switching into the Mamelukes later on, so I would probably have to add more fire farms to keep the Mamelukes going, to add more villagers to the stone so I could make castles, so it's really situational. But the basic one, until we have the Arbalest and the Sig Runs, are th is this one. I couldn't complete the Sig Run, it was on 85%, unfortunately, uh, but it was about to go. If you have a civilization like the Vikings or like the Mayans, you can do this build order much faster, you can have re huge economy savings by having the civilizations, but that's how it works with a regular one, like the Saracens, but I think that this is all that I have to talk about this. Well, thank you for watching this build order and 